You're listening to Chicago Stories, a podcast from City Hall featuring the stories of everyday Chicagoans, as told to Mayor Rahm Emanuel. This is Mayor Rahm Emanuel in Chicago Stories, Steve Delinsky, Pizza City, USA. That's Here me. we are. All right, <laughs> question top of mind on everybody. Yep. You eat everywhere. How do you stay so thin? Because I'm like a neurotic about... You work out every day, I think every day. you told me once. Multiple yeah, times no, I day. don't do every day. I do, there's a thing called core power yoga. They're a chain yeah. and there's a class, specific class. For pizza eaters? <laughs> yes, I can say it's for pizza eaters. I've done this before. It's called Yoga Sculpt. It's a one hour class. It's a warm room. It's not a hot, it's not like a schwitzing, like 110 degree thing, but it's a warm room. There's a translation at the bottom of the screen for schwitzing. Okay, so you, nobody thinks you swore. I know your listeners yeah. are all, they speak, they speak Yiddish. So it's a warm room. They do free weights, aerobic, and yoga. And, and that's called right. Yoga Sculpt. And you do it how many times a week? At least twice, if not three times a week. And that's enough to do... All the eating you do. It is. It's enough. Yeah. Because I'm not, I don't, everybody thinks I eat everything in front of me. I never finish a meal. Okay. No, I just take a couple bites and I'm done. I get New York style pizza. I get Chicago style pizza. Should we really give Detroit its own style? It, yes, for sure. Because, Why? well, it was started there three years after Uno started doing Deep Dish here. In yeah. 43, so in 46, they started at Buddy's. So it's got a long history, like our Deep Dish, and it's been consistent. It's kind of an exclusive club, Chicago and New York. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm willing to invite a third cousin in, but... You're ready well, to give Detroit a seating. They the deserve it. No, they deserve it because it's been around for so long. I okay. mean, if you say Chicago has a deep dish pizza, it's been around since 43. I mean, Detroit's only three years younger, and it is an established style. It's a very unique style. It's a can s- you get it in any other city besides Detroit? Like you Chicago can get, well, you, can get in, you can get it in Chicago. I mean, it's in my book. You can get it in New York, actually. A place called Emmy Square okay. and Lions, Tigers, and Squares in New York, also doing Detroit what style. What made you decide to write this? I was just annoyed with another listicle online saying these are the seven hottest pizza places in Chicago, and no one had actually vetted it and gone out and eaten it. They were just all hearsay. And I thought, well, I'd done a deep dive on Italian beef, and I'd done a deep dive on Vietnamese pho. I'd never done pizza. And I looked up online, and nobody had ever done this, because I think it's such a daunting task. Like, why would you want to eat all these pizzas? Mm-hmm. We have deep dish. That's all we have. We have tavern style. That's it. No, we have a lot more than that. And so I started on this quest about two and a half years ago, and I went to 76 places in about three months. So I was doing three a days for about three months, doing a lot of yoga. And I realized we have 10 styles of pizza in this right. city. We have list, 10 styles. List them all. I'll let you, and you don't have to do it by I don't memory. I'll look at the book. I'll just, know, okay. Yeah, by memory. I, I, and I should we take a slice of one per? Um, we can, but I'll tell okay. you what the styles are first. So we have thin which is pretty basic wedge cut exposed heel. Mm -hmm. We have tavern style, which is the Chicago original, square cut, thin and crispy, sauce and cheese usually to the edge. We have Neapolitan. We have artisan, which is a longer fermentation, a wetter dough, more chefy in origin. Is Um, that wood burn, coal burn, or it doesn't matter? No, 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 it refers to the dough typically, the longer fermentation time. We have New York style slices. Yes, we have those in Chicago. Not a ton of them, but we have New York style slices here. And then we've got deep, of course, the original. We've got Stuffed, started here in 1974 at Giordano's and Nancy's. We've got Detroit, Sicilian, and Roman. So 10 styles of pizza. Now, we've got about four styles here in front of us today. Here's a tavern style, a square cut from mm-hmm. Labriolo. We've got this classic Neapolitan from Spacanopoli up in Ravenswood. There's your Detroit-style pizza from Union Squared. Two racing stripes of sauce across the top, brick cheese pushed all the way to the edge, caramelized perimeter, more focaccia in the middle. We've got a deep dish here from Bartoli's. Now, the owner of this, his grandfather, Fred Bartoli, one of the founders of Gino's. Oh, so really? there's a, that's like a, a, a royalty in terms of Chicago <laughs> deep dish, right? So we've got four different styles of pizza here that we're going to try today. If you want to, of course, if you want to eat them, I don't want to force you to eat. No, I do want to eat. Okay. How could I say no? All right. I there's up, a tavern I style. I in a home. All right. Yeah. You want to, I'm going to, I'll get you a deep. You keep talking. So tell me, do you have a favorite style? Um, Yeah, I would say my favorite style is probably artisan Mm -hmm. because it's thin. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit more sturdy. It's not as soft and wet. I like Neapolitan. I can appreciate Mm -hmm. the artistry, but it's a little bit soft and chewy for me in terms of an everyday pizza. I like the crispy bottom, possibly foldable like a New York style, but I like the longer fermentation time. These artisan pies have what you call a lot of crumb, open Mm -hmm. crumb in the heel, in the side, Uh um, where you can see the air pockets. That means there's a a lot of moisture in this dough. There's mm-hmm. a lot of fermentation that's happening in the dough. It's got more character, more chew, more almost a, more of a sourdough tang to it. And then the toppings, 
uh-huh. tend to be homemade, uh, with the exception of cheese, of course, but they tend to be making everything in-house, like a place like um, Pizzeria Bibu in uh, Lincoln Park. I'm not sure if you've mm-hmm. been there yet. It's like 1521 North Fremont. Mm-hmm. This is a guy, Zach Smith and his business partner, Jeff Lutzow, they used to work at One Off Hospitality together at Nico Osteria. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They started making pizzas together, or Jeff started making these mm-hmm. pizzas, and Zach was like, we got to go into business and make pizzas. So their pizza is fantastic. I know the guys from Alinea typically get that pizza for their family meals. Go ahead and use your hands. I don't, I grew up with And it has good structure and good integrity. It's a 1500 block of North Fremont. It's over by that giant Whole Foods Mm -hmm. and the big uh, crate and barrel over there on North Avenue. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm going to try this tavern. So I typically at La Briola, I typically get their deep dish, which I think is fantastic because there's a lot more corn in it. There's corn flour, corn meal, and corn oil. And a lot of deep dishes in town don't have that much corn in it. They have, maybe there's coarse cornmeal underneath the pie, but there's not corn flour and corn oil in what it. What are your favorite toppings, Steve? I don't like a ton of toppings. I think less is more. I I can appreciate this margarita here, which is mm-hmm. just cheese and sauce. Typically, though, I want sausage. And my mother doesn't want really? to hear that because we, were, we grew up kosher in Minnesota, as you know. But yes. I like sausage because this is a very mm-hmm. Chicago thing. You don't see the bulk sausage on the East Coast. We call this pinch and press, right? Mm-hmm. You have a bulk sausage, lots of fennel in it. You pinch it and press it onto the dough raw. And then when it's baked, that fat melts into the dough, which is what has a great flavor, right? You don't see this on the East Coast. If you get a sausage pie on the East Coast, it's from a link. It's sliced into coins or discs, and it's sweeter. In the Midwest, the Italian Americans like that came know. here... When I eat pizza with a fellow Jew, we're usually yelling at each other, not just explaining our dough. Okay? <laughs> this is unbelievable. It's, uh, you've got to try this. You, are you, you try the tavern style? Or you have the, you have the Detroit style? Yeah, I was doing Detroit because I, I don't think I've ever eaten Detroit. Isn't that great? It's a very good. It's like a focaccia. But I'm kind of a uh, Neapolitan. That is it doesn't my... travel extremely well. I always tell people, like in the book, get this pizza and eat it in. Don't take it to go because it's a very delicate gonna... flour. You don't want to... It's not going to transport well. Ari, my brother, is a strict vegetarian, blah, 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 and like he's gone total L.A., except for when he lands in Chicago, straight down for pizza, deep dish. With sausage. Yeah, every, 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 every violation of the rule. Yeah, that's You great. know, de Blasio messed himself up. I thought that you were going to tell me. It is a knife and fork. Yes. Yeah. Well. New York style. Okay. A New York style pizza should never be eaten with a knife and fork. Yeah. And I think the president and I think the mayor were caught with a knife and fork, and that's a huge uh, faux pas. Um, you would never do that in New York City. Always mm. foldable, three finger fold, on the heel. Um, it's almost like a calzone because it's dough on both sides, right? So you would never do that. But in Chicago, certainly with the deep dish, there's no shame in the knife and fork. Although I will say, with Bartoli mm-hmm. and with Labriola, you pick up that pie after you're a third of the way into it. You can pick it up with your hands. You don't need a knife and fork, right? Right. It's not that no. floppy and soggy, uh. and it shouldn't be. The back end should have some firmness because they're baking it on a stone mm. deck oven, mm-hmm. and the stones have a good heat transfer, and it pulls moisture away from it, and it starts baking that pie immediately. You should be crispy on the bottom, a little bit. Steve, give me the three biggest surprises in Chicago when you're doing the book. Three biggest surprises are we have more than deep dish and tavern style here. You didn't know, you, didn't, you must have known that before. I didn't. I, mean, I knew we had some Neapolitan joints, a handful. I didn't realize we'd have 10 styles of pizza here. That was a huge surprise because everybody outside of Chicago is like, oh, you guys got those above ground outdoor pools. You know, that's one style. That's stuffed. Uh-huh. That's not deep. And that's another thing. Most people get them wrong. You get them confused. They think that a deep pie is a stuffed pie and vice versa, and they're not interchangeable. A stuffed pie, as I'm sure you know, is an extra layer of dough across the top with a lake of tomato sauce on top of that. Giordano's, Nancy's, um, Beggar's. That's not a deep dish. This Bartoli's doesn't have another layer of dough across the top. That's a huge misunderstanding for most people. So that was one big, that was one. One big surprise for me. The other is that tavern style mm-hmm. is Chicago style pizza. I know that deep and and stuffed are from here, but this is the pie that people in Chicago eat on a daily basis. They they eat tavern style, square cut, thin and crispy. 25% of the book is tavern style. That that says something because as I did the research, I called anonymously. Is there a history to the tavern style because of our taverns and our and our kind of neighborhood bar? Absolutely. Yeah, Chicago, city of 77 neighborhoods. People stop in the bar on the way home from work. They would go in, they would have a beer, maybe watch the game talk shop, and then the bartenders realized, well, we could get them to drink more beer if we could get something salty in their mouth. And how do you do that? You pass around something free like this, cut it into small squares. It's very easy to stand and hold a square piece of pizza as opposed to a giant so floppy it, so wedge. The tavern style was a total commercial 
to get more beer. Absolutely. In fact, Mark Malnati told me this story. I went to that, school with Rick. Oh, with Rick. Okay. okay. So, yeah. so Mark said, listen, when his grandfather, Adolfo, was back at, at Uno's, pizza was free. People were not buying before the deep dish. They were just passing it around for free. And so they never thought like, well, how are we going to charge people for pizza? Well, they're going to put it in this larger pan, of course, and make it something more so substantial. That's the, that was the history of the deep dish? Well, Ike Sewell and Rick Ricardo, who owned that bar, it was just called Ricardo's. It wasn't called Uno's until 55. They wanted to give the GIs coming back from the war something more substantial. They asked Blodgett, the oven company, what do we do? Give us specs for a pan. The pan didn't exist, so they used a cake pan, and they built this pie upside down. They went dough, slices of cheese, topping, and sauce, and that's how they baked it for 45 minutes. And then it caught on later. But in, in 43, it was just called the pizzeria, Ricardo's Pizzeria. In 55, they opened up Douay down the street. And at that point, they said, we should call that bar something else. Why don't we call it Uno, since that was the first place we had. So for 12 years, there were just these two deep dish places in Chicago. In fact, several years, 71. And it was all to be, it's, our, it's Chicago's version of the GI Bill? Kind of, yeah. Yeah, and you know, when Lou Malnati left the business, because Lou wanted to buy right. the business, right. and he was pushed out, he opened his place in 71 in Lincolnwood. So really, there were no like three deep dish places from 43 to 71. It wasn't that many. And 71 also was my pie open that year, too. Why does Chicago have 10 different versions? And what was the reason for basically, how long did we resist thin crust in this city? Well, we've always... The Neapolitan no, we haven't, ver version. We, well... The Neapolitan version, just because we didn't have pizzaolos here who knew what they were doing, frankly. There was no, I don't think there was even demand when Jonathan Goldsmith started doing Spockinopoly, frankly. But he was an artisan mm -hmm. and knew that this was the original pizza form and certainly it would catch on because it was high quality. Mm -hmm. But in terms, I don't think we ever shunned thin. We always liked thin tavern style. We just never really understood what this artisan pie or what this um, Neapolitan pie was all about. Mm -hmm. I think that um, one of the reasons we've embraced all these styles of pies is because, you know, you know, Chicago loves experimentation. We like yeah. to try things. It's much more affordable to do things in Chicago. The reason Bonchi, which is a famous right. Roman pizzeria, came to Chicago first, and this is anywhere in the world they had their choice, because they know that people like it in Chicago love to eat, and we like to experiment, and they can frankly afford to take a chance here that they can't do in New York or San Francisco. Mm -hmm. it's, it's too expensive there. So give me, uh, should we be talking smack a little more about New York pizza? We can if you'd like. Well, I so, would, uh, well, just for at least a second. So All right, so well, let me tell you this little anecdote here. So um, one thing I did when I wrote this book was I decided that I, I mean, would I don't have... want to leave the show just talking about Detroit. I want to smack okay, New York Okay, we can York smack New York a little yeah. bit. So I knew that I would have to understand New York's pizza landscape in order to get any street cred, right? because people are going to make fun of me. So I asked three friends of mine who are professional writers in New York, give me your must-visit pizza places. I don't care how long the list is. 56 places came back. Okay, 56. I've been to six of them already. So I planned four trips to New York over five months to yeah. tackle 50 places. And? and I've done that. And you know what? New York has five styles of pizza. That's it. They've got the slice. They've got artisan, Neapolitan, Sicilian, and grandma. Now, grandma, is is we don't have that here. So if a Sicilian is a pie that's pushed into an oiled right. square pan, left to proof overnight, and then topped and baked, a grandma, they push it into the square pan, they top it and bake it right away. There is no overnight proofing, so it's a shorter pie. In case grandma's not going to be around or something. Well, it, it's just like, <laughs> got to do it real quick. It's just like, yeah, basically. grandma's leaving or yeah, something like, like that. Yeah, grandma's just like, we're going to make dinner tonight. We're going to push it into a pan. We're going to top it and bake it. That's it. But the thing that they um, that I like about that pie is it's built upside down. Mm -hmm. So it's typically cheese and then sauce on top. And that's what I like about those grandma pies. And you can find them in several places in New York. You can't find them in Chicago, but again. We have to, something to look forward to. To throw shade on New York a little bit, you'd say yeah. that we've got twice as many styles here. Mm -hmm. There really aren't that many styles in New York City. And honestly, there's a lot of sacred cows in New York that I think are overrated. Right. And, I, I, and I pull no punches on the website, because pizzacityusa.com, uh, yeah. we talk about other cities, and I've got all 60 of the places in New York that I've been to. Give me a break. Arturo's and Lombardi's, they think those are fantastic. I mean, yes, they're classic historical places. They're not good pizzas. Sal and Carmine's on the Upper East Side or Upper West Side, I'm sorry. I would never go back there. It's just a grease ball. Um, a lot of places are overrated Put that in New lead York. when we cut and edit here. Just yeah. a grease ball. There it, it is. is. Okay. Well, it's Give all me the one grease thing. you're wood, dripping Wood versus it. coal. What, how did that catch on and what, and what do you think? Okay, is, so it, is it over? Is, it just, is, the, is the wood just kind of oversold? 
as a real it's no, a concept? No, it's, well, it's an important fuel source, first of all. No, but coal, coal <laughs> isn't practical. Thanks for that introduction to the development of human civilization. <laughs> coal, but now let's get back to pizza. Coal isn't practical. Coal started in New York, 1905, have was we, Lombardi's. Have we promoted your book enough yet? No, we haven't. Okay. Pizza City, USA. No. On sale Amazon okay. right yeah, now. Yeah, that's okay. right. No, but so coal started in 1905. Have we promoted your book enough yet? <laughs> oh, my God. I love this. <laughs> so coal started, that was the original. And when they started doing wood, they realized, okay, suddenly the maximum temperature of the ovens drop. Because with coal, you're baking it at a thousand degrees with yeah. wood maybe you're getting up to 800 you know 600 700 degrees you're not getting up to a thousand mm-hmm. so it lowered the temperature that means a longer baking time for the pies you can't do the pies so, so quickly so it just changes the the heat in the oven it changes how they think about dough a little who bit who does wood best in chicago yeah um I think Spock and Opley is a great example of a wood-burning oven. I think, I mean, I do like coal-fired. You uh, do? They're on, yeah, West Grand. They do a great job. They really do. I, I think Spock and Opley, they're different pizzas, totally there different pizzas. There was a pizzas. place in here you had, I used to live uh, kind of in the West Town area that's on, uh, on Grand. Uh, oh, D'Amato's. Yes. D'Amato's oh, a very, classic. That's a very classic traditional Sicilian yes that's a Sicilian pie in a rectangular pan yes a focaccia type middle like yeah. this Detroit style right uh, but not the caramelized edge like the Detroit style but they bake it in a, in a coal fired oven and it, it's a it's a high dry heat in coal that's what you like about those coal mm-hmm. ovens and they bake their bread in there too which is a fantastic bread but again the reason coal fire opened up down the street from them is because they thought that well if there's no problem with the city delivering coal to D'Amato's as they've done for 100 yeah. years, there shouldn't be a problem to send it two blocks further west to yeah. us. They didn't want to have to go into a different neighborhood or different ward, I think, to ask for permission. I think it was already being done in this ward, and so they thought, well, we'll just go two blocks away from D'Amato's. And that's why there are two places doing coal fired within three blocks. It's yeah, kind I, of interesting. There's one of the apartment buildings I love on the side going through the walkway. The old shaft oh, for the yeah. coal is a great addition. Oh, it's so great. It's about I mean, a character uh, of Chicago. Also, D'Amato's has probably the coolest coffee maker in the city of Chicago. It's this old antique right. pressed tin copper thing that you walk in, and Rose is always you there. Get, first of all, you don't, you don't have to order a cup of coffee. You just can breathe it in. Right. You get your caffeine yeah. high just it's off just, there. It, that's like old Chicago. and That's the part of the city you, know, you, you miss, you love to see. Okay, so what was the weird doing this, New York and Chicago? What was the weirdest topping you uh, saw. The and weirdest? Said, said like, who would? Without hesitation, the weirdest was a famous place in New York called Artichoke Basils, and it's like their signature slice. It's like spinach artichoke dip on top of the slice, and it's kind of disgusting. It's too much. I'm a big fan of one or two toppings. Like, just give me spinach, or just give me sausage, or just give me and maybe mm-hmm. onions and mushrooms. I don't need to have, we, as our relatives would say, the, all the chazarai in there. Mm-hmm. I don't need to have all the too much stuff there's on there. There's another translation. We're actually, when I'm done with my podcast, there's a little English to Yiddish, Yiddish to English translation. <laughs> That's a little great. pat book that comes with That's it. That's good. I should have that glossary in too, actually. <laughs> but I think, yeah, putting too much, too, like a lot of times people in Chicago think that more is better. But I don't, I just don't appreciate it. So one of the th- important terms, the most important term in the book is OBR, optimal bite ratio. When you eat a sandwich, when you have a taco, when you have a pizza, what is it that you like about it? What, what, what makes a good one, right? It's balance. See, my you, thing is to go to, is if you're doing thin, which we do at the house uh, uh-huh. all the time at Bacchanopoli, is the margarita. Yeah, because it's, it's simple, right. right? It's baseline. And if you're doing deep dish, meat I would with probably, mushrooms and onions. Oh, okay. That'd be a little too much for me. I would do maybe... And a lot of red pepper on everything. Crushed red pepper. That's good, too. I like that. I, I love would do, crushed red pepper. I think in Chicago, you should... If you're going to do meat, I would do a sausage, only because that really? is a very Chicago thing. Well, that was started here. Pepperoni... Of course, you know, pepperoni is not a, an Italian thing. If you get pepperoni in Italy, they'll give you green peppers. But pepperoni was something that started in America. And same with the bulk sausage. But that was started in Chicago. So as a Chicago, and I feel incumbent upon, you know, when I order this thing, I should get it bulk sausage because, you know, there's fennel in it, there's oregano. It's more distinctive than it is on the East Coast. Hmm. I, I think you should get sausage next time. Okay, but right? is, are you okay with mushrooms and onions? Yeah, mushrooms and onions are good. Not I, over I, the top I too would, much for you? I wouldn't do mushroom, onion, green pepper, and a meat. I'm not that would be too much. That. Okay, you but can, you're just you, saying mushroom you, and onion. Yeah, just mushroom and onion. Those are good. You're okay with that? Those are good. Now, some people will actually cook the onions first and caramelize them a little bit and then put them on the pizza. Yeah, some people will, but a lot of people don't have a lot of time in their right. day. <laughs> right, right. But <laughs> I can appreciate those, those are the rest of us with a day job don't have the time. But to I can do appreciate that. those places. They go to the extra, they take the extra effort. So, what was your hope with the book? That I could dispel the myth that Chicagoans only eat stuffed or deep dish. Because I was frankly just sick of people on the East Coast. You surprised by the reaction? 
Um, a little bit. A uh, little bit. Yeah, I think people are surprised that we have this many styles. I think people are surprised that all the stories I'm doing about this in the press are Chicago style means thin because mm-hmm. that no one's ever talked about pizza mm-hmm. like this. But, you know, it was one of the things, um, you know, the Molnatis know about this too. Remember when John Stewart did the famous Daily yes. Show episode and Mark went to New York the next day, I think, and did a kind of a That's rebuttal. What, you know, yes. You know, that we was, had a smackdown, Stewart and I. About pizza? Yes. Really? How'd that go? I think I won. All right. I haven't been on the show since, but I thought I won. (laughs) (laughs) Well, that was one of the things that kind of like stuck in my craw. And then I saw they came back to Chicago last year and did a whole week here. And Ronnie Chang, one of the correspondents, they talk about things that they hate and they take a a big stuffed pie and they throw it against a wall. It's like, that's not what we're eating. People from uh, other zip codes are eating You know what, though? I'm not going to give anybody any credit. We kind of sometimes on this argument lead with our chin. Mm. about thick pizza, about the deep dish pizza, et cetera. Because it's what makes us unique. And yeah. it was started here and it's an original Chicago thing. And I you get that. You think you're trying to turn it over that we have 10 different styles here? Yeah. I think by at least exposing people to these other styles, you know, one of the things we do on our pizza tours, which you've mm-hmm. got to come on uh, already, Pizza City USA, every I, weekend we do tours. In about seven months, I have a lot more free time. That's right. I'll see you in seven months. So one of the things we do, though, every tour is four styles of pizza in three hours. I think that's important to show people, hey, we're not just going to go eat deep dish today. We're going to have Neapolitan I, and Roman. I got a, I got a tourist. They get off at O'Hare. They said they want 36 hours Chicago pizza. Mm-hmm. Give me four or five musts from breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I would do the deep at Labriola and Bar. Well, deep, I would go Bartoli, Labriola, or My Pie. Okay. Okay, those are my top three for deep dish. Okay. I don't, no need to go anywhere else. Okay. And I would do tavern style. I mean, if you go don't ahead. mind schlepping, I would go to Vito and Nick's on the southwest side. I would go to uh, Villanova and Stickney. And I'd probably go to Pat's on the north side on North Lincoln. Those are the three best tavern styles, I think. Hmm. Those are really, that's really Chicago style right there. The tavern styles and the deep dish. Those were created here. Those were perfected here. I think those places do the best expressions of those pizzas. All right, Neapolitan, okay. three places I would say, Spacanopoli, yeah. Forno Rosso, and Sapori Napolitani on Northwest Highway. I don't know. That. Not a lot of people know about this place either. Neapolitan gentleman, his wife is Polish. How Chicago is that? That he, would be fitting on the Northwest side. Totally, yeah. and he built the oven himself. He literally brought the materials in from Italy, and he built the oven himself in the building. So okay. Sapori Napolitani. Right. Gonna, I'm going to move past pizza for a couple seconds. Okay. What got you into the whole food space? It was kind of by accident. I was working at CLTV as a general assignment news reporter, coming up to the fifth floor, asking Mayor Daly questions, which was uh, was not my thing. And not his thing either. <laughs> I wasn't. I just I was I never really had. You have to have the right. You have to have a thick skin. You have to have the right personality to do that kind of job. It wasn't for me. I always love food and travel, and it was kind of right place, right time. In '95, Tribune said we're going to uh, expand our. Uh, we're going to do a web. We're going to do our food coverage differently. We're going to change the name of the section to Good Eating from the Food Guy. And we're going to have it come out on Wednesdays. And we'd like our sister station, CLTV, to create some kind of a weekly television show based on the food section. So I raised my hand. I said, I want to work on that show. And they said, well, you're going to go off the air then as a reporter. I said, that's fine. I'll produce the show. I don't care. They had the weather guy as the host. I was the producer for the first year. We won a James Beard Award. This was in 96. I saw you won 13 James won 13. Beard. 13. That was the first one, though, was uh-huh. for good eating. And then a year later, the host quit to take a job somewhere else. And I took over as the host and the producer. And so that was really the, the first for it. It kind of is because that really started my credentials as a food reporter in Chicago. Why do you think Chicago is such a foodie town? Why do you think Bon Appetit said best? Part of it's because part of it's America. because we have this ability to be flexible and malleable, and we can take things from other places and come here and create them in kind of an environment that nurtures and supports and you're not risking your life savings opening a place in on the lower east side you know for 10 million dollars you can do it here for much less and there's a lot of parachutes a great example right, right. husband and wife in Just avondale like three weeks ago i mean it's such a great place right it's so personal they did it on a shoestring for like two hundred thousand dollars you know they're the whole opening another place so. i heard that that's yeah. so great Just like four doors and down they couldn't do that in new york city or san francisco there's no way they have the capital to do that and so that's one of the reasons chicago allows you to do that for financial reasons mm-hmm. but also because people here like to eat you know, we, we have four seasons. Like, I've, you've been on the West Coast. Mm-hmm. Your brother lives out there. They have, like, 
press juices and <laughs> avocado toast for every meal, right? You come to Chicago, it's in the wintertime, we're having braised meats, we're having pasta, we're having heavier starchy dishes because we like to eat, frankly. You know, there are five pizzas in front of us right now on this table because we love to eat in this city and we, we experiment with things and the, the population here supports, I think, um, they do adventurous, support. interesting. Like We just been know. to, Amy and I just went to three new restaurants. Which ones? Did I tell you which ones they were? Uh, actually, this one you didn't. Mm. It's in Roscoe Village on Roscoe, Le, obviously. Le Sud? Yeah. French place. Yeah, I just was up there two weeks ago. I just I, shot a story for Channel 7. I thought that was really, Very really good. good. Uh, Bixie Bar in... Um, in uh, yes, they pronounce in, it Bishi, actually. I realized it really, it's did, I, did, did I screw that That's up? That's okay, but it is and Bishi, it, yeah. It actually was really good. In, did you have the belt Logan noodle? Square. The belt noodle? Yes. That's a great dish. Okay. Yeah, that's... And then last night. By the way, she owns, that's Bo Fowler. Right. She studied chemistry at University of Minnesota. She opened up, uh, what's the Fat Willies? Yeah. And the uh, Owen and Engine. We happened to see that. We went there Sunday after we saw the Joffrey's new Swan Lake, which is spectacular. Oh. And then last night, it's something on the river. I can't believe I'm... Uh, Inter oh, Interurban. Oh, that's a great place. Uh, obviously, after Halloween, we went and we went there, and uh, it was really Christine McCabe. Yeah. Christine, she, she, she was a pastry yeah, chef at yeah, Charlie Trotter's, yeah. right? She had the restaurant in the back, in the alley. And she's moved it now on the river. She's obviously, not, it's on the it, north end of uh, the New Lincoln Yard. It is really a nice restaurant. It's a little boathouse. It's so cute. And the French cute. restaurant, French Mediterranean, uh, we went there Saturday night. We had a great time. Yeah, there's a lot of great stuff going on. I mean, there are closings, but we also have openings right. every other week, it seems right, we're like. We're going to be so. quick because I know we got it. All right. Now, I, do you put hot pepper? Do you like crushed pepper? I like chili pepper. pepper. Yeah, I like crushed pepper, sure. I love it. Actually, I, I like... I love it with olive oil in the olive, and you dip the pizza in the olive oil with red pepper. Well, let me ask you this. As a mayor of Chicago, Jardinier. Yeah. You got to have jardinier on a pizza, right? You yes, ever had and that no. jardinier? So a place in Summit, for example, well, most places when they serve Italian beefs okay. and pizza, you can get jardinier on your pizza. So go to Pat's, for example, you can get jardinier on the pizza on it? or on it. It's fantastic baked on a pizza, or just get it as a condiment. You know what a I spicy need? Chili so I'm going to tell you. So I taught my son Zach how to drive. Oh, by oh. On, well, it was also was that point where all fathers and sons need to spend slightly more time with each other because they're going to kill each other. Uh -huh. So the way we taught, I taught him to drive was. Uh, Chicago Magazine had the 50 best sandwiches in Chicago. So I said, we're going to try one every Sunday. And you and I, just you and I in the car. That's great. And we're just going to drive uh, to the restaurants. And so now that the little punk has grown up and uh, he just finished his half marathon, did 618 mile. That's pretty good. He's going to love this. Because we can, you go to 101 weeks yeah, with and we don't here. have to learn how to drive. Now we can just talk without yelling at each other <laughs> or me covering my eyes, et cetera. Get Jardinier on the pizza for sure. That's a that's a must in Chicago. The, the bulk sausage with the Jardinier. If you like spicy, I you should spicy. try it. Yeah, I try the Jardinier. I, I, I have spice with eggs, spice with everything. Yeah. I love hot sauce. is great okay. on pizza. I like Olive oil with crushed red pepper. It's the same thing. It's chilies and cauliflower and carrots okay. with a hot, spicy oil. You like it. All right. Ready? Uh, well, yes. Rapid round. Okay. And I have all the instincts, unlike others. You're not scared of this. Okay. <laughs> Cub socks. Cubs. I love the North Hancock side. Sears. Hancock. Okay. Lake River. Uh, lake. Thick, thin. Thin. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You, there was uh, there was a hesitation. You want to practice that or you want to do it again? Okay. <laughs> no, thin. Okay. 12 inch, 16 inch. 12 inch. See, I'm every, a glove almost, guy. Every, almost everybody else I've had it is like, you look at it and they go 12 inch, it's softball. Yeah. I grew, up, <laughs> I, grew up, I grew up in Minnesota with a glove and I played baseball. I don't get the How 16 inch How does an Orthodox thing. Jew grow up in St. Cloud, Minnesota? Be honest. Conservative, not Orthodox. But, well, what was the um, kosher thing about So my dad, well, my dad, uh, his father had a scrap yard. So they, were scrap scrap metal, so they were scrap metal. Scrap metal. They were schmata, schmata guys. Yep. Yeah. And then three Yiddish words, half hour. Here we go. My mom, <laughs> my mom was from Minneapolis, mm -hmm. and she was the one who forced my dad to keep kosher. So they moved to St. Cloud, an hour north of Minneapolis, uh -huh. and we would wait for the greyhounds to come deliver the kosher food from on the bus station. Okay. Every week. So our great aunt, Aunt Giddy, who worked at Woolworths, said when you were young, the big thing was to go see Aunt Giddy at the ca at the counter at Woolworths downtown on State Street. Oh, that's great. And she was kosher. But we never told her we weren't. Now, the rule with a great aunt who's kosher is when she came to the house, the rule was when she pointed and said, I would like a turkey sandwich, she knew that you knew that she knew it was ham. But as long <laughs> as she said it was turkey. It's all good. It, it's turkey. That's great. It that's, is not ham. That's... If you say it's turkey. Yeah, then it's turkey. You have not violated. So I used to, when I came back from college, she lived up on Devon. I take her on Friday night for our Shabbat dinner out. We did the candles, everything at home, and mm -hmm. then I would take her out 
68 on the menu was sweet and sour pork. Oh. But if you don't say <laughs> sweet and sour pork, but you call it 68, are you violating a kosher rule? You are not. not. You, are you are not, not ordering. As the, as the people that discovered reading and the written word, as long as you say 68 and don't say it, you have not violated. No trace, the <laughs> no trace past your lips. So she, it was she, fine. Right. Turkey. It's turkey. Number 68. 68. We're all you have good. never violated. And, I, as, and the rule was she didn't need it. It was the first time ever discovered. Don't ask, don't tell. Oh, that's there, great. In the that's Jewish great. Right, wow. It was, not, can... it was not ham. <laughs> I like a turkey sandwich. <laughs> you know, it took me to my senior year in high school before I could have pepperoni pizza <laughs> in my house on a paper plate. My mom wouldn't even let paper, pepperoni pizza in the house. Really? Yeah, very hardcore. So you guys had separate dishes the whole oh, deal? Oh, the whole thing. Milk, inflation, yeah, the whole separate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was very hard to say. Cloud. I think there were like I 10 families. I think your interest in sausage is not Chicago. I think it's actually in violating everything your mother denied you. Well, Until you moved out of the house. If you want to get really deep, counselor, I mean, this could really be. I, well, think I am my covered whole, by. Uh, this is covered by Blue Cross Blue Shield, so don't worry. Oh, good. Yeah, because yeah, so go I think my whole career is a response to my <laughs> upbringing in St. Cloud. It really is. I think I'm making up for lost time. That's yes. what I think it is. Everything we do is to run farther and farther and faster than away from our mothers. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. Because everything I had as a kid was brown, white, and starch, <laughs> and right there was and no baked. and baked. Yeah, there was <laughs> monochromatic. Woody Allen had a great line. I think it was in Manhattan. Nobody has right? great cooking. From the from the Pogrom No, no, no. Okay. Well, the best line was I think it was in Manhattan. Woody Allen said his his mother puts a chicken in the deflavorizing machine and it comes out the other <laughs> side with no flavor. That's like the story of our lives. <laughs> totally, ladies and gentlemen, Steve Delinsky. I don't think we've done enough. Hold on. We haven't. Let's There's let's get a shot of the hats. Look right. at that. Oh, the, oh there. with the Pizza and City the USA. That's there. It is. That's classic. De Blasio. That's Eat your heart out. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, Steve. This is great. You've been listening to Chicago Stories with Mayor Rahm Emanuel. You can subscribe and leave a review on Apple Podcasts and tweet your guest ideas using hashtag ShyStories. Thanks for listening. <laughs>